Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 5th of August 2019 and the time has just gone 11.32 British summer time. And we've had a major sell-off in European equity markets this morning. Um, essentially trade tensions uh, between the US and China have heightened again uh, and that has led to a major sell-off um, in global stock markets. So we saw a large sell-off in Asia overnight. Major sell-off in Europe this morning, and we're calling the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones uh, down a considerable amount. Uh, and so, going to get into the detail here of what's going on, uh, one of the one of the um, kind of um, responses, if you will, uh, from China in relation to uh, Trump's latest move is that um, China have, uh, have uh, instructed state organisations uh, to start purchasing U.S. agricultural imports. Uh, that that's for one. Uh, second of all. Uh, that the pressure that is put on, actually put on the Chinese currency, the yuan, uh, has led to the, to the yuan dro- dropping below the uh, the seven dollar mark. So one US to US dollar gets to, now gets to US seven yuan. And the relevance of this is that uh, previously uh, the People's Bank of China, the Chinese Central Bank, in the past uh, have been known to intervene in the currency markets. Uh, and stabilize the currency if it's ever if it's ever coming under a bit of weakness, uh, and the fact that the Beijing authorities didn't uh, intervene and they allowed uh, the, the currency to fall kind of below the kind of psychologically important seven dollar mark really shows us that kind of Beijing mean mean business. Um, the fact that the the that the market didn't intervene is almost like an intervention in itself, if that makes sense. Um, so the, so President Trump. Is, on, is likely to be kind of quite unhappy about that. Uh, he, and historically, he's been very quick to call out other um, countries if they've been, in his eyes, manipulating their currency, potentially weakening their currency uh, to actually uh, help their domestic exports. Um, but in this case, uh, the fact that the People's Bank of China just stood by and allowed the currency to, 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 to drop really just says that, that they're kind of, you know, kind of in a way getting back uh, at the US in that form. This has led to sell-off in you know metals like copper uh, and iron ore. So in turn, we've had a major uh, hammering of the mining companies, you know Glencore, uh, Antofagasta, Rio Tinto, the likes. Because, because many of the uh, because the FTSE has a disproportionately large amount of mining companies and oil and gas companies uh, in its makeup, the FTSE has been, been, been hit pretty hard by this. Um, on top of that, uh, we've had some economic indicators out of, uh, of Europe today. Uh, we've actually had reasonably good um, service numbers out of the UK, showed it improvement on the month and better than expected. But given that there's a lot of, which given that, that there's a lot of uh, uncertainty uh, in relation to the possibility of a no deal Brexit, if the pound is still fairly subdued. Um, the, you know, this morning's numbers were, um, were uh, you know, a welcome addition. You know, were, 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 were well received. But keep in mind the kind of the wider negative trend in the pound is still very much in play. Uh, we've had some fairly mediocre numbers out of the eurozone in terms of the the service sector, um, but keep in mind, given that there's um, given that there's, there's been a broad based sell off in the US dollar, that's really seemed to kind of take precedence. Um, I'll take a look now at some of the major markets, uh, and then later on we'll take a look at the, uh, the the events of the week. So starting off with the with the FTSE 100, um, the FTSE has endured quite a few a few, a s- several days. Of, uh, of, uh, of, of of being in the red, and as you can see here, um, the FTSE 100 is uh, is firmly below its this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, and it's, and it's also below its 100 day moving average, and with particularly kind of relevance to the 50 day moving average, which I'll be talking about in some other equity markets uh, charts. We have had an aggressive move to the downside in the last number of days. There's been a steady increase in ne- in negative momentum, so momentum is. Um, the, the rise in negative momentum it confirms the the, the, the the downward move we're seeing in the market. We're looking if we continue to kind of press on lower from here, we could be looking at directly in this red line here, the 200 moving average, which comes into play at 71.85, and a move below that could take us toward this area here, the lows of um, of early June, in around the 70, 79 mark. Any move to the upside. Um, in the FTSE 100, could run into resistance uh, at, at the 100 moving average, uh, which comes into play at 73.88. Uh, and above that, we got the, the blue line here, the 50 moving average uh, at 74.37 might act as support. I will be talking about the 50 moving average across the next few mar- uh, equity markets that I look at. But essentially, uh, we're seeing a 
across the board sell-off in global stocks. So uh, the, the wider negative trend uh, is likely to continue. This here is the, uh, the Germany 30, as we call it, uh, or the DAX. Well, you know, as you can see, the DAX is even kind of in, uh, in, in worse shape than the FTSE 100. We've had an aggressive sell-off the last few days. In fact, the DAX actually traded down as low as uh, this red line here. It's 200-day moving average. Uh, we, we're holding above that for the time being. It acted as support uh, and in the past. It's potentially going to act as support again in the future. For now it is, but that could all change. And that comes into play at 11,647. If we do see a break, a size of a break, below the, the 200-day moving average, we could be likely heading back down toward this area here at 11,400 or this area here at uh, 11,270. This level wasn't seen uh, since late March. Now, if we do have a bounce back in, in the uh, in the in the, in the DAX support, sir, apologies, resistance. Resistance can be found from this area here. They go psychologically important 12,000 mark. Uh, and if we go beyond that, uh, we could be looking heading back towards this blue line. The 50-day moving average 12,236, and it's only really if you're going to take above, go above that metric, because uh, then we we'll be, going to begin to think, you know what, maybe this this recent negative trend has come to an end. I take a look now. What's going over at the Dow Jones? So the Dow Jones, obviously, we, we hit um, in kind of mid-July. We were kind of uh, at all-time highs, and then we've. Uh, had a bit of a taper off and a bit more of an aggressive sell-off uh, in the last few sessions, but we're holding, we're only below, so we're below the 50-day moving average here, this blue line. We're even also below the 100-day moving average, uh, and there's been a steady increase in negative momentum the last few days. So if we, if we could do continue to press on lower from here, we could be looking heading heading towards the psychologically important 26,000 level um, on the uh, on the Dow Jones. And if we move below that, this um, this trend line here. I could, could come into play uh, a support in around the 25,730 mark. And we can see here on a few occasions that that, that line um, did act as you know, both support and resistance on a number of occasions. So, uh, and if, so if, a, if a predictor uh, support line or trend line was relevant in the past, it makes it more likely it will be so in the future, but obviously there are no guarantees. And if you do have a size of break below that, uh, we could see support be, be found from this red line here, the truth of moving average, uh, 25,567. It's only really if you're going to head back above the 50-day moving average uh, at 26,518. It's only really if you're going to get it back above that. Because then we begin to think, you know what, maybe the recent sell-off uh, has come to an end. Um, sticking with the U.S. equity market theme, I'll go with the have a look at the S&P 500. Similar situation whereby it was printing uh, record highs uh, only as, 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 uh, in late in late July, but we've fallen below the 50 day moving average and we've even fallen below the 200 day moving average here. Apologies, we've fallen below the 100 day moving average. And essentially, um, while we can hold the boat below these metrics, it's likely we could see further downward pressure on the S&P 500. And if we do press the lower from that, we could be looking at heading back down towards this trend line, which is comes into play at around. 2,830, and I move below that by bringing the kind of psychologically important 2,800 mark into play. Um, this trend line obviously has, a, has, a, has a, on a few occasions has acted as both resistance and support on a number of occasions um, in the last year or so, in the last couple of years. So it makes it more likely that it will be of importance in the, in the near term, in the future, but there are no guarantees. Um, and if we do have a size of break below that, we could be looking at back towards the 200 moving average at 2,791. Uh, and once again, it's only really if you kind of you know, move back above, um, to, for example, this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes to play at 2,932. It's only really if you kind of take head back above that, could then we begin to think, you know what, maybe the wider upward trend in the S&P 500 is, 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 um, is going to continue. Notice how, on a few occasions in the last in 2019, the in the last few months even, the, the 50 moving average acts as both resistance and also support. So, if a metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it will do so in the future. And the reason why I was talking about the 50 moving average on the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, the DAX, and the FTSE was because Dow theory tells us that the averages must confirm each other. Um, and essentially, if all the stock market, of all the stock markets I was just talking about, if they're all below their respective 50 moving averages, it makes it more likely that the kind of wider negative trend is going to continue. 
Uh, conversely, if they're all above their respective 50 moving averages, it, makes it, it would make it more likely at the wider positive trend we continue. But essentially, um, Dodd theory talks about essentially says the markets must be kind of moving in the same direction and they're all falling and they're all below their respective 50 day moving averages. So even if you're trading one and not the others, it is worth keeping an eye on what the other markets are doing. Now, I've talked about markets that have, uh, have, have been undergoing aggressive declines. Now, let's take a look at the gold market. So the combination of the softer US dollar and also the fear in relation um, to the sell-off in global stocks has pushed gold up yet again. So the gold, the gold market has enjoyed a massive rally, uh, especially in the last few months, and, it's, uh, and that rally is very much continuing. We're currently trading around 1460 on the gold market. And uh, if the wider positive market, what positive trend continues to play out, we could be looking at targeting this area here in around 1485. Given that uh, buying the buying uh, buying the dip has been a popular strategy uh, in recent months, uh, any moves to the downside might attract some fresh buyers. So if you do have a move to the downside of gold, support could be found from this region here in around 1410, or this have this trend line this uh, this line here in at the psychologically important 1400 or even perhaps as low as this region here in around 1382. I'll take a look what's going on on the oil market, starting off with Brent crude. So obviously, China is a, is a big uh, importer of, um, of, uh, of commodities like oil. Concerns about global growth and steady global manufacturing has put pressure on the oil market. So I can see here, um, essentially since April, gold's been in the old market rather has been in a fairly clear downward trend with a nice series of lower um, lower highs and lower lows. And we can see here uh, we're, we're well below the 50-day move, the 50 moving average and the 200-day moving average. Uh, the blue line being the 50-day moving average and the red line being the 200-day moving average. And while we hold below those metrics, it's likely that we could see further losses in the oil market uh, and, and the Brent market. And if you look at if you look at pressing a lower below the psychologically important 60 bucks a barrel me metric, we could head back down toward this area here in at 56 spot 71. It's only really if you should get back above the 30 moving average at a 65 spot 37, because then we could think, then we begin to think, you know what, maybe the recent downward trend has come to an end. Take a look at WTI. Um, similar situation in WTI, whereby uh, it's, WTI is in a better shape, but by and large, it's also been, it's also been getting hit quite hard. Um, I did have a fairly sizable sell-off between April uh, and into mid-June, and then a nice, a nice recovery. But notice, since then, we've had you know, the lower low, the lower high, and yet again at the lower low. So the pressure is very much to the downside on the on the on the uh, on the WTI market. If we do look to press on lower from here, and if we kind of take out this area in around fifty-four dollars a barrel, we could be looking heading back down toward this region, um, just below to get a fifty-one dollars a barrel area. Uh, if it, if the if the market does manage to kind of press on higher, we really need to be kind of taking out um, the re the recent uh, this the recent high here in at 58 spot 70 before we can think you know what maybe the um, maybe the, the the downward trend has come to an end. Turning our attention now to what's going on on the currency markets, I talked about how the um, the euro has uh, pushed higher against the US dollar on the back of overall dollar weakness, but by and large. You know the, the the wider negative trend has been very much in play. It wasn't. It was only. It was only last week. Uh, we, we got down to about the uh, not too far away from the kind of one ten mark. So the wider downward trend is still very much in play uh, for for euro dollar. And if you look to if you look at turning over yet again, if you do that, uh, and if the wider downward trend continues to play out, we could be looking at it back down toward, towards uh, one spot ten. Uh, any moves to the upside. Uh, and if further moves to the upside in euro dollar, it might run into resistance in around the one spot 12 metric. And if you go beyond that, we could be targeting this red line here, the 200 moving average, and that comes into play in around one spot 13. Um, pound versus the US dollar. So obviously, the, the, the uncertainty and fear surrounding. Um, we, we, Surrounding Brexit and the possibility of a no deal Brexit and, and the talk even of a, of a possible general election has really uh, has really hit the pound very hard. As we can see here, the pound has just managed 
just off of last week's lows, but notice how the moves to the upside have been very much, uh, very much limited. So the wider downward trend is still very much in play uh, for the pound versus the US dollar. And if you do press on lower from here, and if you take off the last week's lows, we could be looking heading back down towards 120. And should we go below that, we could be looking heading back down towards, kind of heading down towards the 119 region. Uh, any moves to the upside and any bounce backs could run into resistance in around the one spot 24 area. Uh, and if we go beyond that, um, we, we can see resistance come into play from this blue line here, which is a 50 move the average in at one spot 2542. I'll just take a look now at some of the um, some of the major um, announcements on the week ahead. The week ahead can be found on our website. Uh, if you go to cmcmarkets.com and under news and analysis, uh, you, you'll find that the bulk of where we, uh, we, we post our analysis. Um, so we've talked about the um, the PMI numbers that have been out of uh, the eurozone and the UK this morning. Uh, looking ahead to tomorrow, we've, we have the interest rate we have the interest rate decision from the uh, Reserve Bank of Australia. Uh, tomorrow we also have first half figures from Rolls Royce. We have third quarter figures from Disney on Tuesday as well. Tomorrow, second quarter figures from Lyft on Wednesday. Uh, on Thursday we have first half figures from City World. On Thursday we have second quarter figures. Second quarter figures from Uber. Uh, on Friday we have second quarter UK GDP. Uh, and also on Friday we have a Canadian jobs uh, jobs data. If you have any uh, comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google And that's all from me. Thank you very much.